the eye is burning, the ear, the nose, tongue, body, the mind is burning. All six senses, the Buddha said, are burning with aging, illness, and death, passion, aversion, delusion. And those six senses are both his definition of the world and his definition of old karma. It's not a very life-affirming or world-affirming view. But it does affirm something else. That if you're going to look for happiness here, you're looking in the wrong place. But that doesn't mean that happiness can't be found. It's simply a chapter to look elsewhere. So that accusation to the Buddha's teachings are not life affirming or world affirming, it's true. But from his point of view, it's common sense. Think about your old karma being burning. It's from our old karma that we derive the raw materials to try to find happiness. But if it was unskillful karma, that the raw materials are, are painful. And if it was skillful, they're pleasant. But around the pleasantness, you can con congregate all kinds of other trouble. You know, that blessing we have may be beautiful, strong, wealthy. Beauty has its drawbacks. Wealth has its drawbacks. And if you get attached to the good things that you've created, well, that burns you too. It's like it's a dirty trick. We work hard to be skillful. And then the rewards, when they come, are rewards that we can't really hold on to. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try, because there's another way of dealing with those things, is using them as tools. We have the opportunity now to practice. That's the result of good past karma. We'll take it as an opportunity to practice. Don't throw it away. Don't waste your time. Don't get stuck on the pleasures of living in a relatively comfortable monastery. surrounded by other people who are practicing. You can't just stay there with the pleasures of harmony, seclusion. You've got to use them. So even though these things are burning, when we practice with a path, it's like being given the, the kinds of gloves with which you can handle burning materials and not get burned yourself. So the way out is to find something that's not in the six senses. But we use the material within the six senses to get there. But we're doing this because, as the Buddha said, there is a true happiness that can be found outside of the six senses. I was teaching up in Canada recently, and I happened to mention that the Buddha never said there was anything wrong with looking for happiness. Now, there are some versions of Buddhism which say you shouldn't look for your own happiness, you should think about the well-being of others and put your, your well-being off to the side. But that's not what the Buddha taught. He said if you want to really help other people, first you've got to learn how to find happiness within, because then when you know how to do it, you can give them good advice. You can be a good example. And the happiness you find within cannot be found by being selfish. You have to be generous. You have to be virtuous. You have to train the mind. But it is basically a search for your own happiness. Simply that if you do it with heedfulness, you find that you have to develop wisdom, compassion, purity as you do this. One of the people in the audience who said she'd been meditating for thirty-some years, listening to Dharma talks for thirty-some years, never heard that idea, that the search for happiness was okay. 
what you think about it, is what the Buddha's teachings are all about. He's not affirming the world out there, but he is affirming the heart's desire for true happiness. It is possible, and it's a good thing to look for that kind of happiness. Just learn how to do it heedfully. So the practice we're doing, it's not to keep us living in the world in a comfortable way. If we don't make it all the way to awakening this time, we will come back, and the good karma of the practice will make things comfortable. But again, we can't just wallow in the comfort, grab onto the comfort, because it'll burn you. But if you learn how to use it, that's what makes all the difference. This is the way in which the middle path is a middle path between indulgence and sensuality and self-torture. In other words, it doesn't pursue either sensual pleasure or pain. It uses those. You use the pain to gain an understanding. You use not sensual pleasure, but you use the pleasure of the mind that's concentrated. That could get the mind to settle in. And so it's not a middle, middle path of kind of sort of pleasure or sort of pain. Actually, the pleasure that comes from concentration can be very intense. But even this is a burning pleasure. After all, the word for jhana, jayati, is a word for burning, but it's a steady flame. It's not the flickering flames of passion, aversion, and delusion, which can get you all deluded about what's going on out there. When you look at things in a flickering flame, it's hard to figure out exactly what's happening, what's actually there. The shadows move. Things come in and, in and out of the darkness. But when the flame is steady, then you can even read small print. It's still a flame. It's still burning, but it's been adjusted. So you get the mind into concentration so you can read it. And then ultimately you get to the point where, as the Buddha said, the fire goes out. Now the image there is, or it reflects the belief in the Buddha's time, that fire, when it was burning, was clinging, and it was agitated. It was trapped in its fuel, but when it let go, then it was freed. It was no longer agitated, it was calm. And that's the message here. The six senses don't hold on to us. We hold on to them. And because we hold on to them, we're trapped. But when we let go, then we're free. So it's up to us to realize that no matter how good things can get in terms of sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, and ideas, they can still burn you. But if you learn how to use them, you can find a way to use these things to get you past the burning. And into freedom, because that's what the image of the fire that's gone out conveys. It conveys freedom. So even though the teachings are not world-affirming or life-affirming, they are freedom-affirming, happiness-affirming. And that's what counts. We're not here to save the world. Sometimes you hear people saying that the Buddha wanted us to get rid of all kinds of suffering, wherever the suffering is. They use that as an excuse for all kinds of social programs, saying that they're Buddhist. But the Buddha is very particular. It's the suffering that comes from the own mind's own actions. That's what he's putting out. He's not here to save the world. He's here to go beyond it. And that's where our practice should be ended.